Welcome to another episode of Wake Up and Live. It is your girl, Chantel Simone, your life purpose engineer, helping you navigate life on purpose, for purpose, with a purpose. And today's episode, we have a wonderful guest. And there you go. So today's episode, I have a very special guest, and his name is Mr. Antonio Dubois, and he is the master, the king of cryptocurrency of Bitcoin, and we get to hear a little bit about his journey. He has traveled the world many times. He has a beautiful family that he's been developing and growing, and um, at the same time, he's on top of his game, living his life on purpose. So please help me welcome Mr. Antonio. Welcome to the show. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I'm so glad Jesse you had me on. Chantel, it's a pleasure to uh, get a chance to catch up with you again. And, yes. Uh, meeting, meeting, it's great when you get introduced by great people. Uh, uh, meeting through my good friend James as well and, and get a chance to uh, come and be on your, your, on your stage is, uh, is a pleasure as well. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. You know, that's what's the, you know, I, I'm, I'm big on energy of who you attract, who you're being. And when you're in the right circles, you just meet great people. And I'm, and when you meet great people, you know, stay connected. <laughs> so Absolutely. You so, better. You know, exactly. Like energy has to be that way. So it's huge. Yeah. You do that. I think that's one of the most important things is to be in the right place, the right people. Exactly. Uh, I think that, exactly. That, that can determine your destiny rather quickly. So that's a plus. A hundred percent. It could propel you to where you got to go next just because of your association. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, what, you, what you've been up to for the past little while, and then we'll get into some other questions. Okay. Well, again, my name is Tony DeVoe, and uh, I have been a computer scientist for 20 years, mathematician for 20 years as well. Uh, I own uh, several businesses. One is a blockchain development company that I took control of interest of less than six months ago. I've uh, been involved in the digital media space where we create applications and technology for different companies and for entrepreneurs all over the globe. I've been running that company for about 14 years. And I recently published a book called The Blockchain, I'm sorry, The Bitcoin Formula, uh, which is actually for sale on the bitcoinformula.info. And the name of our blockchain company is called The Blockchain Formula, which you can see at theblockchainformula.com. Uh, we, we're basically doing projects in 17 different countries right now. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, there's a, there's a lot going on. There is serial entrepreneur at heart right here, right now. <laughs> and I love that because, and, and I love the fact that you're, you've been traveling, you're, you're going to where people actually have been pulling at the, this topic of Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency. So let's take a step back. Why don't you tell us how we, how you actually got on that journey? So did, what did you go to school for? Did you ever imagine that this is where you would land? And how did you get here? That's an interesting thing because all of these different pieces sort of fit together. When you combine them, they all sort of fall into the same I love when particle. That but ironically, it just, it just sort of happened that way. Like I got into the space, well, being a computer scientist for one, in a mathematician, you're, you're pretty much able to pretty much do almost anything, to be honest with you. Anything that deals with the technical environment, anything that comes out with technology, they're always looking for someone with a uh, mathematical mindset, is what they used to always say, yeah. in, our, in a hiring environment. They wanted people that were really good with numbers. They wanted people that understood technology. And they also wanted people that were innovative, people that I've had several inventions that I've created, several different types of marketing systems that I've developed as well, that you know that we are, have patented, and these are technologies that are, these are our babies, or my baby, right? Mm -hmm. So I've been in this space for almost 20 years, but in the crypto space, ironically, a good friend of mine that actually uh, is a, doing very, very well for himself, called me, I want to say eight and a half years ago, and told me about Bitcoin for the first time. And this, at that time, Bitcoin was $19 and some change for one Bitcoin. Oh, wow. Okay. So this, so this is, I heard about it pretty early on. Okay. Well, you know, yeah. some people bought it when it was under a dollar. I mean, I heard about it when it was a little bit less than $20. And the guy told me about it. This guy was doing well for himself, and he said that I should take some interest in checking it out and, and, and put some money into it. And now, now, to tell you, Chantel, how ridiculously silly I was, I had just sold an apartment building like a week before he told me about it, and I had the check sitting on the countertop. I hadn't cashed the check, and he kept telling me to buy these Bitcoin, and I just 
for some weird reason, I, I just wasn't, I wasn't enthused at first. I kept saying, I kept saying, but explain it to me more. It's not making sense. I said, why would I want to trade dollars for something called a Bitcoin? I said, well, what can I do with it? And he couldn't explain it very well. Mm. But, but that day, he bought 15,000 Bitcoin in $19. He did do that. That's what he did. Now, okay. yeah, true story. And he bought again at like $24, but that's another story. So I didn't buy any right away. I heard about it, I listened to him and everything, and I just kept watching for a little bit. So we, we didn't contact each other for about a couple months. The next time I talked to him, we didn't have a conversation about the Bitcoin again, but about a year later, the topic came up, right? And I said, man, I said, you know, what, what happened to that, that, that coin thing you were telling me about? And he didn't even say much. He didn't tell me he was making a killer. He's like, ah, he said, it's doing okay. It's doing okay. I said, okay, well, that's good. That's good. I said, one day I'm going to check it out, right? That's how people do you when they're making money. Exactly right. <laughs> so, I said about another year goes by, and we end up talking because, you know, we, time to time we just check on each other. And this, uh, this is about a year, year and a half after that. About a year and a half after that, we talk again. And he's still saying, you know, the crypto space is going to take off and all this different stuff. So long story short, we talked a multitude of times after that, Chantel, and this conversation about Bitcoin did not come up because I did inquire. About five years later, I should say about four and a half years later, we're coming forward to 20, early 20, 2017. Mm -hmm. Now, in 20, early 2017, I'm already getting calls from different companies, Fortune 500 companies that are looking at blockchain technology. And blockchain technology is the backbone to Bitcoin. It's what allows Bitcoin to be able to work. So basically, Bitcoin is on what's called an open ledger. It's a reporting system that's very transparent. So it's equivalent of what a bank has, except a bank has all the transactions privatized inside of the banking system. The blockchain is just a public record. It's a public ledger where you can see all of the transactions for all the Bitcoin anywhere in the world. You just can't see the names that are attached to the accounts but you can see all the transactions. Okay. So different companies want that same technology. So make a long story short, um, I asked them just out of curiosity, you know, I said, what's going on this, you know, with the Bitcoin thing? I said, yeah, I haven't, haven't heard you talking about it in a long time, right? And he starts laughing. He's like, oh, he's like, man, that old thing. <laughs> <laughs> he says, close to $1,000 a coin right now. And I looked over, and I ran to the internet. And I got <laughs> right. And you're like, what? Whoa. This thing's at 981 bucks. Chantel, the man still had 30,000 Bitcoin wow. that he had bought way back five years before. And plus, he had been buying even more on the run-up. Wow. I'll tell you how crazy I am. I'm like, oh, man, this thing is maxed out because he's building a resort. And he's building a resort. Wow, look at that. He's a small islands. He's completely liquid. He's not borrowing any money from anybody. He despises banks. He does everything completely self-funded. And uh, I'm like, my God, man, this man's millions upon millions of dollars worth of this stuff. So you have this journey. You have this journey of keep checking in with this guy about this coin. And he's kind of playing. At first, you know, see, that's really funny. Because at first, people are excited about it. And yeah. then the more success, is, he kind of tapered off being like, well, you know, it's going. They, they it's going stop even saying too the much about it. They're not going to tell you a hundred times. And let me tell you something. You haven't even heard the good part of how funny the story gets. Uh -huh. So he stopped saying too much. I said, what's these thousand bucks? He said, yeah. He said, what are you doing? Well, I said, yeah, I'm building some projects through the company. And I'm selling marketing systems to companies that are they're saying they're, they're, they're doing a different types of Bitcoin platform. So and tell you how funny it is, in 2017, we got contacted by a company out of Belize that was building a trading platform that was trading cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, and they wanted a marketing system, right? So we're negotiating with this company for about three, four months, right? Companies open and everything, and they're basically getting people to use their platform, Chantel, all over the world. When I came, they brought us on board. There was uh, 240 people using the platform. Uh -huh. we, built, we built the marketing platform for that company, and they used the platform. And literally over time, almost 700,000 people became users of the platform. So a lot of those users came through our platform. And uh, the whole time, I kid you not, during that one little year span, I would I not only watch that company become a billion dollar company in nine months with our technology. Wow. Also, but also the price of Bitcoin went from $997 all the way up in 2017 through that January to $20,000 dollars a coin 
Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Then it retracted the back some in 2018. It was sort of flat. And now it's taken off again. So that's just the short, the short of the story. And so during that time, we've just been, uh, we've really been blessed because I've, I've learned n- not only a lot about the markets, about trading. Also, we've been mining cryptocurrencies as well all over the globe. Wrote the book, traveled to 47 different countries all over the world. Wow. Wrote- networking, running different, you know, running different uh, marketing systems and building technology for other people as well. It just, it's just, been, it's been phenomenal. I mean, it's been a lifetime of excitement in 24 months. To so say tell, the- me, tell me something then. So you have, it has really taken off with the world of IT and the world of cryptocurrency. When you were younger, did you think that you would end up in this field? Absolutely. No question about it. You knew. Uh, my, my, you know? my mom, this, 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 is, this is all destiny for me as far as I'm concerned. See, this my is mom, where we want to talk about. <laughs> yeah, but, but listen, I, this, I, I watched, I got a really early tranche. I, listen, I've been an entrepreneur since I was seven years old. I had my own business since I was eight. So I got a really early start. I never wanted to work for nobody. I've always, I was a funny kid. I don't want allowance from anybody. I like to hustle. I like my own grind. But my, my mom, it's just, she'll tell you right away, I was an oddball child like that. I just don't want anybody giving me anything. I like to control my own bag. I've always been like that, though. Right. So, but my mom is a computer scientist also, a uh, master's degree in one of the top universities in the world. And so she also has a background, in, uh, she has a double major also. Uh, my double major is computer science and mathematics. Her double major is computer science and electrical engineering. And then she got a master's in computer science also. So, you know, we, we, got, we got some smart genes that sort of run in the bloodline, you know? So uh-huh. she was taking me to class with her when she was going to college. She didn't have a, she couldn't afford a babysitter, so I was going to school with her at college as a little kid. How old were you? Five, six. Wow. Yeah. That's important yeah. because that's the, listen, before, any time before the age of seven or eight, that's when children are most pliable. That's when they, you can program them. So you, you can program, can program them. this you program since before you were five. You program five. Absolutely. And, and that's what happened. I, got pro, I like to go to the classes with her. She was doing, they had her building little bridges out of toothpicks with glue and stuff from structural wow. engineering. I loved all this stuff. I mean, to me, it was like Legoland as far as I'm concerned. So I, I just decided pretty early on, I was like, wow, this is pretty nice stuff. I said, wherever I get a chance to go to college, I said, I want to do the same thing. She said, well, you may not like it. I said, no, I love it already. This is good enough. And uh-huh. I said, well, maybe I can find a way to run a little business. She's like, why are you talking about running a business? I said, listen, I'm not gonna work for nobody. Wow. I don't believe that God put a man on the planet Earth to be answering and taking orders from another man about concerning the money. I don't believe that. I never I believe that. I totally agree. I know. I mean, that's, 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 that's not the, the point. No, that's, that's, that's not what I'm here for. No. You know, I'm here to grow the economy. I'm not here to take orders from nobody. Exactly. We're here to be deployed, so, not hey, influence. I'm here to create resources. I, I don't need nobody a, 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 a penny pinching me nothing. I'll get on the grind and get what's mine. So My, what made you think that huh? way, though? Because that's important. I love that. I you know what's so crazy? I can't. That is the hardest thing to explain. Because <laughs> people ask me all the time. They say, because well, at eight years old, I was running my own little business where I was doing, I had two businesses running, really three. In my first business, I had, uh, they wanted to give me, a, uh, my mom was trying to give me allowance. I said, I don't want any allowance. What I need, I need you to take me around to the stores. I need to find me some bikes that don't sell. And she said, why do you keep saying bikes, plural? I said, I want one bike that I can ride so I can follow my other bikes because I'm going to rent the other ones out. I'm going to let the kids wow. in the park borrow those bikes, but I'm only going to take one bike out at a time. She just thought I was, and this is like at seven years old. But that wasn't enough money because every day wasn't a lot of extra kids outside. So I said, listen, now I got to go around to all the neighbors and offer to do their yard work for them. I get 10 or 15 of the neighbors I can do their yard work every week. Or maybe another 30, 40 bucks at least every two, three days. I kid you know, my mom thought it was crazy. I took all my little extra money, my own bags, my own shovels, my own little cleanup supplies. I went knocking on everybody's doors. I said, listen, I'll take $2 a day to start. If you like the work, I'm bumping my price up to four bucks. I come <laughs> I'm a negotiator. Oh, I'm negotiating. I'm negotiating. <laughs> so now I'm used to cash. Another thing I think is important to kids, people need to get their kids used to handling cash early. You yes. just understand money better. Then all the stuff on the phones and the digital, that's fine. But it's something about putting your hands on your physical money to learn yeah. how to count and compensate and think for yourself, right? So you know how to balance your money around, what you got to do. And I, I was just a monster early. I mean, and listen, I, and this made me fortunate that I only had one job in my life. And that job, I was almost forced to take that job. I had a job with the government. They had a special, specialization project. They needed somebody that was fluent in Japanese and had a computer background. And so, and I hated the job. I had, like, they always begged me to take the job. And then right. I ended up not well, even I get that. 
But after that, I was through. I said, listen, I, I got to do my own thing. And so I, I went into business with myself. I never looked back. And that was, I'm 42 now. That was, you know, was 20, 21 years ago. Wow. Listen, I want to ask you. So I had the privilege of meeting your beautiful wife, Danielle. And I know you have, you're raising two children right now. And they're teenagers. And they're also entrepreneurs. Yeah. So how did your experience growing up as a child impact you being a father at this moment? This is, this is the exact same thing right now with them. They run their own business. <laughs> I kids love can it. do whatever the, the, the kid, if you said if kids can see that they can get all the stuff that they want doing what their parents do especially if they see like this because a lot of times the example in the house is not matching up but with these kids are being influenced by they're seeing this stuff that these favorite entertainers and all these these, these singers and all this stuff they see these people living very well if you yeah, can't yeah. duplicate that success in your household they tend to get connected to the outside world but if they see you in the house Living a living a large lifestyle, they they want to get in on the party. So they right. daughters run. So what age did did you help them start their business? Did, did you, one picked up a little earlier than the other, but they both teenagers both picked it up around both nine and ten, right? Wow. But then they just sort of kicked in the gear at different speeds, though, right? So now the daughter, you know, she she gets upset if she has a day where she didn't average seventy eighty bucks a day on her own, she's upset, and I like that. I like that. <laughs> you think, oh, listen. You figure if you had a 14, 15 year old child that doesn't want to be without a couple thousand dollars cash, this is my kind of child. So they don't need anything from you, you know? Uh, and you I, want me, I want everyone listening right now to pause for a minute because listen, you even said that they started a little late at nine and 10. Yeah, they started a little okay. late. Do you know how many 19 or 29 or even 39 year olds <laughs> have listen, even started their own business that they desired? It, it, it's, the it's better to start early as possible. That's as early as possible. That's the thing. And then having a consistent grind is so important. I can't tell people what kills most entrepreneurs uh -huh. is not that they don't have the right business. It's that consistency level is off. Consistency. You gotta, it's, 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 I call it the law of averages, right? One, yeah. of my, one of my favorite little mentors, Zig Ziglar, used to say this all Zig. the time. <laughs> you know, him, Zig Ziglar and my other good one is, uh, what's the other little nuts name? Zig Girl. Ziglar. Oh my God. Jim Rohn. I just love Jim, Jim Rohn. Rohn. It's a it. so law of averages. You know, yeah. I believe you're not going to see results every time you make a move, but you have to keep making those moves. It's just like a good example is if you go to any, I hate to call it third world countries, say any developing countries where you got to go out in remote areas and you need to pump water from a well, right? Yep. Sometimes you got to pump that thing 20, 25, 30 times. You're like, well, where's the water? Mm -hmm. Don't see coming out of the well. <laughs> is it broke? Yeah, so yeah, right. Yeah. Have to keep stopping and looking for the water. No, keep pumping the well. It's gonna come. It's gonna come. It's just a, it's just a matter of time. And if and if you don't have the discipline to keep performing and putting in the work until it happens, you never get the glory. It never happens that way. And, and again, mm -hmm. I was yeah. just gonna say again. That's another important point because you you spit now nuggets here, and I want people to really catch it because. A lot, especially as an entrepreneur coming from you, a serial entrepreneur since you were seven, you know, a lot of people, it's so easy to give up when you don't have that, you know, sale on a package or you don't sell that product. You're like, then you start thinking, well, is this for me? Should I keep going? Maybe I'm doing the wrong thing. Have you yeah. ever thought that along your journey? Oh, listen, you, you, if you're always going to have a moment of doubt, right? Yeah. Where you're wondering, oh, am I doing the right thing? But let me tell you what the secret is. The secret <laughs> is, is that leaders hmm. tend to sometimes analyze and second guess for a little bit. But once they make a decision, they stick with it. They is. stick with it until they're proven wrong. Yeah. So once I've decided that something's going to be profitable for me or for my house, there's no changing that. And don't let me start seeing some success. Yeah. Oh, Giving it full throttle. I don't believe in starting and stopping. That's just not my. That's not my. That's not my modus operandi. That's how you put yourself in a position where you never see fruits of your labor. Because if you don't work consistently, you'll stop and you'll be thinking about what you should be doing as opposed to doing it. And as opposed to doing it. Oh my goodness! Just yeah. paid to think, except for philosophers. And there's not that many philosophers out here right now that are making an extraordinary income. Okay? Yes, that's right. That's, you know, one of my previous mentors used to say. Leaders make decisions quickly and change yes, their mind so slow, and yes. followers <laughs> change their mind quickly and make decisions slow. Slowly. That's, you hit it right on the head. 
That's yeah. exactly what that's exactly so, what I love that. And that's so important. And we got to always remind her, I have a sticky note because I'm a thinker. You know, I grew up left brained and I'm very, very analytical. I grew up in finance. So I will think my business to the death of it. <laughs> so doing, yeah. you know, at least half your work has to be the doing. So I love that you said that. And that when I realize that it starts to shift my results. So, so let me tell you, it's, it's in, in this, and then you got to have your streams right, rolling right. Like we we're we're tapped in right now. Like I am so funny about when they say that you're a, 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 a entrepreneur that's a million that has to have them seven eight streams of income. This is yeah. true. You know, sometimes they say a person could be a jack, you can you know, be a jack of all trades, but a master of none. That's that's all. That's all cliche. It's cliche you, wow. you better be a jack of multiple trades and a master of many, is what's wow. said in my house. So we are eating in a whole bunch of different verticals, but and, and, and everything is working well. But it does require that you master several things and it can be done. Um, Malcolm Gladwell has a, a book called Outliers. Oh, right? I love that book. Mm -hmm. In that book, he talks about people, some people consider to be that freak of nature person where it seems like no matter what they do, they're successful, right? Mm -hmm. And it's so few of them, but the reality is, is that it requires more studying, more work, more discipline, right. more repetitive action yes. than what most people are willing to do, but I can do it for multiple different things. Like perfect example, I'm in the blockchain space. We're doing, we got multi-million dollar projects we're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm in a Bitcoin space it's doing the exact same thing. But we have other companies. We, you know, we, we're selling products. We got weight loss products that we're developing, selling online. Mm -hmm. We have physical products for body shaping. I mean, all the cool things yeah. that men and women love to spend their money on. You have to tap into those income streams. You have to do it. You have to do it. There's billions of dollars moving in some of the easiest verticals in the world. Even mm -hmm. cleaning, one of the kids, I mean, it's, he got his own little business, cleaning business going. It's, it's a big business. I know a it's lot of people are. Business. It's people don't understand. When I was cleaning houses, mm -hmm. when I was eight years old, I was saving thousands upon thousands of dollars. I wasn't even 10 years old. And then I would leave from that little business I had, and I would go to the local supermarket, and I would go up there, and I would carry bags and carry groceries and top maybe another $70, $80. Mm -hmm. And I was just stockpiling money constantly, right? That's amazing. Kids now, kids are so removed from wanting to do physical work of any kind. They're just completely lazy. They spend all their time on their I'm cell phone. Fine. And the crazy part is there are ways to make money on the cell phone, which I'm tapped into as well, but 99% <laughs> of people are not doing that. They're just on the phone, burning time, burning resources, and burning energy, and burning brain power of all. Burning brain power. Maybe See, no, no benefit. I love that you're saying to be, you know, you could be a master of many because even Malcolm Gladwell, the same author, he says you dedicate 10,000 hours to yes. anything and you could become an expert. Absolutely. And so, that's what I think that's one of the it's a it's a gift for us in the human race. And it also causes slight confusion because mm -hmm. a lot of people, they feel like they're all over the place. So how do you stay focused and I'm glad you just while said you're that. being a master? <laughs> Let me tell you the secret. Okay. You must master one thing first very well. The problem that most people is they take on five things and they're trying to chop between those five things. Yes. It doesn't work like that. Yes. You have to master one thing very well first to develop and create your cash flow to move. Oh, you, these are golden know, nuggets. I hope oh, you were right. I studied, it. Notes. <laughs> yeah. I studied in this thing called Gen, something called a Gen Network, which is years ago. There was a there was a, a training topic that came up that talked about the four levels of consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I hope I don't mess these up, but the first level of, of consciousness where you are unconsciously incompetent. Yes. You don't know that you're dumb on something. You just, just don't know, right? Yes. And that's where you are when you're trying to figure out everything. Second stage is when you become consciously incompetent. incompetent. And yes. you know, at least you know you don't know nothing, <laughs> right? You don't so, know. There you go, right? Now, the third stage is when you become consciously competent okay. that's yeah. when you started to understand what you're doing you're doing your study you're doing your research this is your ten thousand hours right you got it that fourth stage is when you become unconsciously competent that's the mecca that's the mecca <laughs> baby that's where you're floating with it that means you you know your you know your birth you know what you're doing so well yeah. that like autopilot you don't even have to think about it it's exactly. just you know, you just get that. You know, sometimes you know, somebody says, you know, can you do that? I was like, oh. Yeah, yeah, oh, I got yeah. it. I got this. I got it. I, I, mean, I don't even got to think about it. I mean, it's done. I, I love think, that. It's done. It's done. I don't even think about it. That's 
be unconsciously competent. That's when you want to be in your level of mastery in whatever things you decide to get involved in, whether that is in blockchain technology or whether that is in yes. crypto technology, whether that is in uh, coaching or, or in advising other people on their God-given gifts. When you get to that level, you see, that's when you should start being able to take on additional trades that you can start to study. Yes. You can study two or three other things because your one thing where you are unconsciously competent at is flowing so good. You and your chi is so strong that you, you never have your flow, at least some cash flow never stops coming in and now you can magnify and grow that in some other way. So, right, right. Because it's not taking your brain power anymore. You're on autopilot. It's You're on you. autopilot. See? So you have gone through each of those steps, the four stages of learning. Definitely, I'm, not, I'm so familiar with that and, and teach that in some of my training. So I totally love that you brought that up. So when you hit that last level of unconscious com it, competency, where it's just happening naturally, then that's your first thing. Check, done. Now you can start putting your brain power to your next level mm -hmm. of mastery. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That, I and, love that. And you tend to have your most fun in that space because it's not as, it's, it's not that it's not as challenging. It's just not, it's not nerve wracking. You understand it so well that while other people are struggling, you sort of, you sort of, you sort of giggling inside. It's like, to yeah. me, it's nothing. You That's why different muscles there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 it's, it's what my old mentor used to say, you're burning less calories in your brain because nice. you, you got it going so good. He said, you freed up some, some brain space to do something else, you know? I so, like it. I mean, it's powerful. And then you just got to be fearless about whatever you're pursuing. I, I'm, I'm interested in going out because my mentor passed about a year and a half ago. He died. Uh, and I've been looking around saying, you know, I got to find me another mentor. I think everybody should have a mentor. I believe yes, that. Yes, yes, and yes. That, right? So there's a guy, there's a, a gentleman that's out in Scotland. He's a billionaire, okay, mm -hmm. that has a mentorship program. But uh, with him, this guy's the real deal. They, they want $20,000 up front. Mm. come out and, and have conversational dialogue with these guys. So this is for people that really want to go to a whole nother level. But I've seen some of the individuals who went through his mentorship program. I um, mean, some of these guys are nine figure people now. So I'm, I'm interested in going out there for that. But that's what, that's where my whole next little move is at. But the, but everything's going marvelously right now. Our little businesses, the family's good. The, the crypto space is good. The technology space is good. That's awesome. And, uh, so great time. in terms of clients or people, what would people come to you for? Now, see, now you're asking the right question. <laughs> yeah, a, a true capitalist says, so the person asks you, well, what do you do? Mm. A capitalist response is, what do you need? Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. only so really connected to your resource, right? But no, but people come to me for, they want anything, any, any type of technical advice or any marketing advice or anything in the crypto, blockchain, or the Bitcoin space. If you have any kind of marketing that you need done digitally, Primarily, because we, we, we know all types of marketing, but digitally is our, is our, is our forte. If you have uh, books, content, products, um, technology that you want marketed anywhere in the world. I mean, in 195 different countries, we've done business. Okay. Um, so, and this is online. So if you need to have any product in front of a target audience, whether that be for high net worth individuals, whether that be for people who are for moms or that you want to buy uh, barrettes for their daughter's hair. We had a client who actually uh, creates barrettes to put in little girl's hair. Uh, they were only, only a $4.50 product, but she's making over $100,000 a month off of that product. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. So if you, need, need. if you need a targeted audience, mm -hmm. then we know how to make that happen for you, uh, how to create the algorithm to search those people out, create the video content, create the ad copy content, create the, pay, the funnels, the payment systems, the websites, everything that you need to create uh, some self system. Yeah, enterprise going on there. Listen. <laughs> You know, there's, 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 there, there are pieces to the empire. So yes. you come up with an idea. The other thing is being able to execute on it and make it profitable for yourself. So okay. if you're struggling out there trying to figure out what direction you should go in, or even if you need uh, legal counsel for, your, for your, uh, your particular product or service, we've had some clients that went on the Shark Tank as well. Um, so we had a client that came up with something called a pick box, which is just simply a little device that holds uh, floss picks. And oh, it, yeah. it went, it went viral. Uh, she's actually in uh, multiple stores all over the United States right now. So all kinds of different products. I mean, digital products, physical products as well. So you need marketing for those. Wow. So out of, out of all of your gifts, out of all the things that you're good at, what would you say is your one core innate gift from God? <laughs> Sales. Sales. Yeah. Okay. So seeing the need and, and showing how that you can feel that need. 
Absolutely. That makes sense. That it makes sense. Ties everything together. People all, but people say that they don't like sales. Uh huh. What they're really saying is they don't like success. Because wow. every single successful person is in the sales business. If you think I'm kidding, name one that's not. Mm. You need to go to church. Jesus Christ sold the gospel. <laughs> you got to go out and got to put it out. You got to evangelize. You have to talk about it, right? right? So everything is about being able to put out your information about whatever product or service or anything that you are standing behind, no matter what it is, whether it be religion, whether it be physical product, no matter what it is, you have to be able to articulate your product offer. Yeah, and it, that's, that's, that's interesting my you forte. That. That's interesting you say that because I always used to, like a long time ago, I started network marketing maybe about 10 years ago and that's when I it felt really salesy and I kept saying, I'm not a salesperson, I'm not a salesperson. But then when I would meet people and my organization starts to build and grow, they're like, oh, she's a really good salesperson, talk to her and I'm like, but you know what I realized? It's about value. Value. That's it. If you, I just, if I value something, I can talk about it all day, every day, because yeah. I see the value and the benefit. Yeah. So, yeah. we are all salespeople once we see the value. Oh, let me tell you something. Let me tell you one of the best salespeople. Oh, my goodness. Danny? Oh, my God. Look. Listen, that woman can sell. Uh, I think I fell in love when I said, listen, whenever I see somebody that can sell, yeah. and sell with confidence, though. Nice. There's something about a confident woman. She knows how to say, I don't care what anybody says. This is when you know you've tapped in to your own belief system because you need to be confident in yourself mm -hmm. to sell. You have to. You have to. You have to feel confident in your product and yourself. That's where people get sales confused. I always say that if you're a confident person and you find the right product, you're going to have everything you want in life. You really are. If you can fulfill the need of someone else with a confident product and you feel comfortable in your own skin, Sky's the limit, man. Yeah, wow. If it, you need self-confidence. You need to love yourself to sell. That's yeah, you need that self-confidence. You know? And we're living, we're, living in the life, we're living in the laptop lifestyle era right now is what I tell yeah. people. Like, Listen, as long as you have a laptop. So when people tell me, I get this all the time. People say, DeVoe, you're making it look easy. Uh -huh. I said, no, man. What it is is you're making it difficult for yourself. Wow. As long as you have access to the internet, hell, you don't even have to have your own product. We can get you a product. What you got to do is you got to get confident in yourself, go through your personal development, mm -hmm. understand who you are as a gifted individual. Exactly. And study one of these crafts, whether it be sales. What, and and just, that, that's where I kick in, right there. People who don't know who they are, have no confidence, don't know, you know, if they're going or coming, they're gifts. You can't operate in this life if you don't have that solid. Yeah, <laughs> so too. I, seek I, help, I, people. If you're, if you're there, connect with someone, get guidance, get mentorship, because that is everything. Listen, I had a training series that I did called The Four Elements of MLM. A multi -level I did this training, like, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I talked in that training about two types of people. I said, you have some people, I call, I call the equivalent of playing hockey on the ice. Mm -hmm. You have some people who go through their whole life dodging, getting hit by that little, that little puck. It's like somebody's always shooting a puck at them. They're always trying to catch their foot and they're trying to recuperate mm -hmm. all the time. Those are the people that are always struggling with their identity, struggling to find out what they're supposed to be doing, struggling whether or not they feel like they're in a comfortable yeah. space. Then the person on the opposite side is the guy who's hitting the puck. He's the one with the stick. Yeah. He's the one taking all the swings, shoot for the goal. Those are your CEOs. Those are your venture capitalists. Boom. Those are your guys that are living laptop lifestyle all over the world, doing whatever they want to do. They're taking risks. They're controlling, they're controlling the stick. Yes. It's really only in between those two. Either you're, hit, you're hitting the puck or you're dodging the puck. And you got to figure out which side of the ice you want to be. I <laughs> love that. Right? Yes. I mean, I think, so, I think it's a perfect analogy for... That <laughs> for, for, for is it. That it is. And you know, because when you get hit by a puck, that hurts. You know, it's the equipment that hockey people have on. <laughs> yeah, listen. So, so that's why I put it out there, because there's a pain to be experienced in the game. See, yep. people think that if they hide, there's going to be less painful, and that's not true. Somebody's always shooting that puck at you. So exactly. no matter how much you hide or get up in the corner in the wall, they're still going to fire at you either way it goes. So you might as well get in the fight. Oh see, my God. And, and look to win because nobody, you're not going to get any mercy in life. Everybody's got problems. Right. <laughs> the problem's not going to stop. Everybody's got deaths happening, losing jobs, bills piling up on you. That's going to happen to everybody. The only question is how you going to respond to it. That's, That's all it wants. 
Right. Oh my God. Listen, I don't know. So we usually do a recap and we'll talk about some key points, man. I don't know. You're going to give us a lot of work to be doing <laughs> to, to summarize this and we marketing the key point. We got to do a part two. Cause yeah, I, you do I, mean, I would love that because you have shared, you know, one of the key things and just from with my background in neurolinguistic programming, studying the human mind for so long, the fact you have been programmed from the before the age of seven, which is the, the most critical time in a child's life. You were programmed for success. You were programmed with your mom, you know, taking you to courses and learning things. And look, you are a living proof of what that can actually do to a person. And now you're passing it on to generations to your kids. I love it. There's so much more I would love to deep dive into. So we definitely have to do a part two. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I love it, man. This is, this is exciting stuff for me. So and, and I'm awesome. very familiar with NLP. So, so we, we're talking on the same wavelength. See, that's yes. what's comforting when you speak to people who have been putting in the work. Because mm. to study NLP, you got to put the work in. You have to really? understand how the human mind works. Why does the mind work the way that it does? Exactly. Right? Why is it certain words can trigger certain things for people to do? That's right. Yeah. That's it's so, that's listen, that's I started at the practitioner level and I just started to learn for me. Then I did the mastery level. Then I went to the trainer level, you know, because when you, you got to be hungry for knowledge and then apply Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Okay? Not just the hoard it. Words you just said. It. The applied knowledge. I know a lot of smart people that don't have nothing going on significant right now. Exactly. But the people that yeah, out there yeah, put in the work. work. <laughs> listen, pay for our works is dead. That means you got to move your feet. That's you right. That's There's right. No That's right. Out here. People can, you can take people to the water to drink. They don't mean they can put their head down there and sip the water. Can't make them drink it. <laughs> right. They can't drink the water for you. Yes. You got to put in some work in the process. Yes. Yeah. And that's why I'm doing things like this because I keep meeting great people and I didn't even know how, how I, you are just such a, a wonderful poster child of being able to have the right mentality and the right efforts and action and to take charge. And now you're duplicating yourself. And I'm sure you have with your teams and across the, the world, you know? So yeah, it was a such an, <laughs> <laughs> such, oh my God, I can't wait for a part two because I, I got, and now I'm going to target some specific questions because a lot of people need to know that it's possible. Oh. A lot of people need to know that it works. Oh, if we do a part two, I'm going to lighten you on some stuff that's so, oh, you don't have some belief when I'm getting done telling oh, you. No. I got some Forrest Gump kind of stories, boy. That you, there's no out here. If you awesome, put in the work, awesome. oh, it's going to come. It's yes. going to come. Good. And the belief system is one of the key things that a lot of people just don't have. Yeah. And, you know, I've spent a lot of time in-depth research and knowledge, spiritual, practical knowledge, divine truth, to be able to really understand this thing of life. And so what yeah. I love about our guest today, Mr. Antonio Duar, he actually has applied this stuff. So... You know, I could be teaching the theoretical, we could be introdu introducing him for the practical. So definitely rewind this, go back, take notes on the key things to success because he dropped a lot of key nuggets about the journey of life. And so if you are, as you already know for with the work that I do, if you are in a position you don't know who you are, if you, if there's, you need some sort of self-connectivity, you got to be able to pull from divine truth from our creator to be the confident person. So you can go sell and, and, you know, be a, a serial entrepreneur if, if that's in your path, like uh, our guest here today. So Antonio, I so appreciate you. Is there any final things that you want to share with the audience? I'll say this, you guys, you're getting, you're getting real nuggets here uh, with Ms. Simone's platform. And let me tell you guys, don't take that for granted because one of the biggest mistakes that most entrepreneurs are making, they're not getting advice from other people who are already making it happen. I've always heard something very powerful that if you want what someone has, you need to not only be willing to do what they did to get it, but you also need to make sure that when you see people making it happen in real time, you need to latch onto those people and follow that success train. Because a lot of the people that you're hanging around every day, a lot of people burn a lot of time with people that are dragging you down, slowing you down. Just because you love those people does not mean they're going to go to the finish line with you. And that's one of the main reasons I want to go see this new mentor. This guy, man, he cuts it to the bone. Like, he's not, he's the real deal. Like, if you really want to hit your plethora to hit your top-notch success level, you're going to have to be in an uncomfortable space sometimes. That's just the way it is. You're going to have to cut loose. 
Yeah. You're going to have to invest in yourself. You're investing $20,000 to be a mentor. Yeah. You know, there's some, some people spend more money on clothes or at parties or at the bar than they do in themselves in their future. I go in some people's houses. I see no books. I see no personal development tools. I see no, no, but, but, but I kid you not. I see thousands of dollars worth of shoes. Mm -hmm. I see, I see oversized TV sets. Yes. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's disturbing. Yes. Yes. And it's no judgment to those people. Just be mindful of what you're the actions. Every decision that you make changes the trajectory of your life. So if you decide to invest more in TV or shoes, rather than like you said, in a book that's going to help develop your mind, but will help develop Mm -hmm. your life. Your Mm -hmm. life will be indicative of the choices that you make. Absolutely. So, so avoid complaining. Look at your decisions. Absolutely. Right? Yes. This is Man, true. We, I'm excited for round two. We, we got some stuff for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Let me know. Let me know. We're going to make it happen. I'll be yes, let's happen. do it. Let's do it. Well, this is part one, introduction to the mind and life of serial entrepreneur, the Bitcoin king, Mr. Antonio DeVar. And, oh, I'm saying it wrong. How do you say DeVoe? Devo, yeah, either was good. Some people say okay. Devo, some people say Devo. Cool. And mm-hmm. as well as you guys know, Chantel Simone, and I always tell if you're if you're ever looking to be able to deep dive into your true, authentic self, get to the core of who you are, stay connected. Remember, you have one life, so make it count and navigate on purpose. Signing out. Thank you so much. And have-